Every season of The Amazing Race is an adventure. There are good racers, bad racers, and lucky racers. A good season of The Amazing Race takes you around the world and grips you with its interesting racers, crazy challenges, and close calls. You will want to tune in episode after episode to see where they go next until it all finishes with a hopefully satisfying conclusion. Each racing pair we look at together will experience their journey from beginning to end, from the time they are introduced until the inevitably get eliminated or win the race. We will look at every character moment and strategic move to determine whether they were a hero or a villain and whether they were good or bad racers. And with that, welcome to The Amazing Race. As we get ready to begin, The Amazing Race. For reference, we will only be observing what the TV show is showing us and what stories being told through the show. All character moments and strategic moves are interpreted with the mindset of what the story is trying to tell us. And before we start, I want to thank you all for watching what I make and ultimately supporting what I do here with liking, commenting, and sharing. It means a lot and makes me financially able to make more and more great in-depth content for you all. If you want to help make this channel grow and help me continue making more in-depth analysis videos, then consider joining joining me on Patreon. For only a few bucks a month, you can pick who I make videos about, watch all of this channel's content early, chat with other fans of the show, and even get exclusive videos every month. Thank you for your support. Before we even begin with The Amazing Race, I want to say that this story is best served as a direct sequel to Rob and Amber's time on Survivor. As you may know, in Survivor All-Stars, they fell in love, they dominated everyone, and by the end, they got engaged on finale night. They played so ruthlessly that friendships were ruined, and they became massive stars and household names overnight. This show that we are about to cover takes place six months after that engagement and is them still at their peak popularity. So I do highly recommend watching their All-Stars videos before proceeding further as it gives amazing context and helps set up what is going to happen here. Anyways, what you need to know is that they are the only pair of people on this season that has them coming from another show. Everyone else is completely new to reality television. When we first meet Rob and Amber on this season, Rob says that they have a competitive edge and they're in love. Amber says she is looking forward to settling down and having a house and kids. And I think it's pretty clear here who cares about what and who enjoys the spotlight between the two of them. We have this profound friendship turned into love. Rob and I are definitely looking forward to life of settling down and having a house and, you know, one day having a family. And But right now, we're going to do what we have to do to win. We end up meeting all 11 teams, and whoever is relevant to this storyline will be talked about when it matters. But for now, let's begin the race. Go! And they're off. Their first task is to fly to Lima, Peru, and everyone has to drive to the airport to get on one of two flights. Rob and Amber completely fumble the start somehow as they can't even open the trunk of their car and it has them beginning the leg in last place. There it goes. <laughs> All right, we got it. I got it. So far, we're doing good. Despite this poor start, they're still in good spirits with Rob joking, saying that, hey, maybe we should just go grab some food while we're at it. And Amber saying, actually, we need to get cracking and lose some weight before the wedding. I'm starving. I want to get something to eat. How much money do they give us? <laughs> this is surviving, you know, you can eat over here. Yeah, but I'm looking forward to losing some weight. We need to lose some weight. Rob then tells us that they are winning the million dollars. Losing is not an option, Amber says, but they will have fun while doing so. We're winning the million. Did I fail to mention that? We're definitely winning the million. We're gonna have fun along the way. Yeah, we're gonna have fun while we win it. However, due to their slow start, they do get on the second flight regardless. Upon arriving in Peru, they meet a guy at Customs who recognizes them and agrees to help them. We met this guy while we are at Customs and he recognized us from Survivor and offered to uh, help us out with what we're doing here today. With his help, they stay way ahead of everyone else who was on the second flight with them and beats them all to the next clue box easily. We got all of Peru working for us. When the other teams talk about Rob and Amber behind their back, not everyone knows who they are, so Patrick decides to inform them all that uh, Rob is dumb as a rock and he can't even barely form sentences. This must be blind hatred for Rob as this isn't even close to being true, 
but it does tell us what others are feeling about him. I've watched Survivor. He's really a dumb as a rock. Oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> he can't put a sentence together. Yeah. However, Robin Amber's guide is so good that he actually gets them caught up to the first flight who had an hour and a half lead. And they net one of the three spots on the first flight to Cusco, Peru. <laughs> Got it. That's it. It's all. <sighs> we did it. You'll be flying on a 6 a.m. flight. As it turns out, Patrick is not alone in his anti-Rob sentiment, as Debbie and Bianca both think that Rob and Amber have no right to be on this race. They have no right to be playing for another million dollars. In fact, they would rather see any other team on the same flight as them, except Rob and Amber. If we had a choice between Amber and Rob or anybody else that was on our flight, we wouldn't have chosen Amber and Rob. They don't need to win again. Amber then tells us that while everyone is being nice to their face, she has this sinking feeling, this gut feeling that uh, they don't really want them there, despite what they're saying to them. Rob says, well, that sucks to be them then, which is funny depending on your perspective of these two. You still have this gut feeling that they don't really want us here. That's just too bad for them, isn't it? <laughs> they fly into Cusco, Peru and get to their next location, which has them zip lining across a gorge. The Amazing Race will do this a lot where a task is not hard and won't slow anyone down, but it is fun for them to do and it makes for a fun moment on television. They get their next clue on the zip line and it has them doing their first detour and they pick roping a basket instead of roping a llama. And this was definitely the right choice as they finish that task in first place. Thank you very much. Make your way to Ambatillo Police Station and ride back in the marked delivery truck to the town of Pishak. They now have to go to a market to get their next clue and that requires jumping on the back of one of these trucks that leaves every 20 minutes. They end up getting on the same truck as Susan and Patrick, which is the first truck, whom they make friends with despite what Patrick said earlier when he called Rob dumb. However, he still wants to personally be responsible for eliminating him. I didn't know if you guys were going to be nice or not, I have to admit. I thought you were going to be like cutthroat. We would love to be personally responsible for their disposal. However, when they all get to the next market together, Susan and Patrick find the clue box first and then help Rob and Amber find that clue box. Oh. Amber! 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 Baby, baby! Rob! Right here. Make your way to the pit stop. Their clue says race to the pit stop and hey, they could actually get first place here. However, their taxi driver goes the wrong way and on top of that they get stuck behind a vehicle that has completely stalled out now rob does jump out and helps that stalled vehicle move which is good as no one told him to do so and uh he wants to win honey come on push this car i love that edge okay back in the cab back in the cab wait to hurry they finally get to the pit stop and phil tells them rob and amber your team number three what a first leg for Rob and Amber. After starting out in last, they raced their way back up to third place and was even in first a couple of times. While they did work hard to get there, they got a big boost when arriving in Peru to have a guy who recognized them from Survivor helping them. Now, not every location is going to have someone recognize them. So the big question is, how can they survive on their own without their past fame to help them? Or will they flounder under pressure? It is now leg two and they have to travel to Arequipa, Peru. Every leg generally starts off with us getting a small glimpse into what each team is thinking as they begin the leg. And here Amber tells us that Rob is the leader on this race and her job is to mostly talk sense to him and calm him down when he gets too crazy or goes too far. Rob's definitely like the leader of our team. I think he feels comfortable with that. I like to talk some sense into him sometimes, but if he needs to make those important decisions, I just let him do it. The first bus leaves at 6 a.m. However, Rob and Amber get to working and talk to some locals. They find out that there is another bus that leaves at 7 a.m., but it's faster since it has less stops along the way. They are already hard at work to get a leg up on the other teams, and no one else even knows about this bus as everyone else has just blindly thought, yeah, we'll all get on the 6 a.m. one together. Another thing to notice is that Rob seems to be very good at knowing enough Spanish to speak to the locals and the rest of the race he will have put in the legwork to know how to say the things he wants in their native tongue or he will have written down in their language on a notepad what he wants to communicate to them. It just shows that he's doing work even when the race isn't actually happening. Un stop. Es mejor. Mejor. Gracias. They keep this awesome bus info to themselves, 
but they do tell Yuchenna and Joyce. However, Lynn and Alex suspect something is up and they go talk to the security guard. I was getting help from a security guard there and he says, I'm told I cannot help you. And I said, who? Who told you not to? And he's all, the guy in the cab. So it's just FYI, don't trust Rob. Yeah. The Rob father is back. This annoys everyone who didn't know about the faster bus and now everyone does not trust him and for good reason. The other teams then try to confront Rob on this and he lies to their faces while maintaining a straight face of his own and acts very offended that they would even consider him a liar at all. However, the other teams are not buying what Rob is selling here and uh, it's pretty apparent. Lying to somebody is completely different. Tell me what I lied about. No, I'm, uh, I'm not getting Because lied. there is nothing. Accusing somebody of lying, that's, that's how it personal. Let's just lying. say it's a good thing that people can't be voted off. <laughs> Every team does get on that faster bus and it is a large one to boot so it can fit them all. It has doors up front and doors in the back so that people can get on and off pretty easily. Rob teams up with a few other teams to bribe the bus driver to only open the doors near them. What Rob does is he pulls the money from the other teams around him and gives it to the bus driver. However, what Ray and Tina and Ron don't know is that I never really chipped in my five and put it back in my pocket. I'm only using that money to grab <laughs> When the bus arrives, the people in the back are super annoyed that their doors don't open, but now everyone has to do a roadblock, which is a task that only one racer from each team can perform. They have to shine enough shoes to make a certain amount of money, and Amber elects to do the task and blazes through it pretty quickly, leaving in second place, which nests them tickets on the first flight to Santiago, Chile. Gracias, gracias, un sub. Uh, thank you, thank you. They arrive in Santiago and they run into a detour, either buy items from a market or stack books and bring them to a library. They choose to do the books task and Rob uses his construction background to smartly stack them up and get them all in one trip, which other teams struggle to do in terms of stacking them all without knocking them all over, or they just can't do it all and they gotta do it on multiple trips. Either way, it doesn't matter because Rob and Amber finish the detour in first place. They now race to the pit stop and... Welcome to Santiago de Chile. Rob and Amber, you're team number one. <laughs> they actually got first on a leg with no help from anyone who recognized them from the show, which is very impressive. How are you enjoying the experience? I think it's awesome. To tell you the truth, I think it's bringing Rob and I closer together. And I'll tell you what, I could never do this without him. I would not be here right now if he wasn't standing with me right now. The third leg begins and now they have to drive to Argentina. Rob tells us that on the race you need luck and you have got to take some chances along the way. And he says they are living the American dream. And as I said before, it really feels like they're racing with nothing to lose and it's kind of hard to not root for them. Amber and I definitely have luck on our side, but we've been taking a lot of chances. Without taking chances, you really can't have any luck. However, all teams get equalized since no one can get their cars until 5 a.m negating the lead Rob and Amber had over everyone. Rob and Amber take the opportunity to stay at a hotel since they have the time, and uh, Debbie and Bianca go there as well. So when Rob and Amber leave, Rob actually Rob fathers the taxi driver into letting him take their taxi from them. He then tries to act like this is revenge for Debbie and Bianca accusing him of lying, which he did actually do. We're gonna go with you. Quantos? Quantos te pago? Cuatro. Cuatro. Yo pago diez. I don't teach him for accusing somebody of lying. <laughs> when everyone finally gets their cars to drive, Rob hits up the police to escort him to where he needs to go so he doesn't get lost. Can you drive and show me? Best way to get directions in San Diego, get a police escort. They travel to Argentina and actually arrive at the detour in first place where they have the option to ride bikes or paddle down a fast moving river. They pick the river. And along the way, we hear how much Lynn and Alex hate them. Rob and Amber, come on Alex. Lean forward, lean back. I hate them so much. But Lynn and Alex are an unreliable source of morality when there are many times this season when they say something that could easily be deemed as racist. Anyways, they finish the detour behind Lynn and Alex and Amber tells us what motivated her through that seven mile river course. The whole entire time I just kept thinking, you're getting in shape, you're getting in shape. You're burning fat calories, you have to get married soon. You have to fit into a dress. Keep rowing. They then reach a very difficult roadblock and has them needing to eat four pounds of meat, of a wide variety of meat on top of that. Rob elects to do it, and Rob is disgusted by some of what he has to consume, and uh, since he wasn't very good at eating gross food on his first season of Survivor, this is classic Rob, nothing new here. Is it any good, or is it yucky? I don't wanna talk about it. One team even pukes along the way, 
That's how, uh, that's how much food they're eating. But Rob devises a plan. Like he has all race, Rob is going to think outside of the box on how to win. He decides, I'm gonna quit the task and take the four hour penalty that comes with not doing it. Ooh, I can't finish. What happens if you can't? Penalty. He then decides to rob father a couple other teams to also quit to guarantee that him and Amber will not be the last to leave the task. I'm not gonna sit here and suffer for another three hours. Make these people I quit. I'm done. Two other teams do take the penalty as well, and this is some next level strategy and manipulation that you almost never see on The Amazing Race. What I would have to do in order to pull this off is to make other teams realize that there is no way they would be able to complete the task. You're not gonna finish it. I know, I can't do this. How about you? I quit already. I gotta quit eating this. I'm giving up right now, and I will take my penalty. I'm finished. The beauty of the plan is that it was foolproof. As soon as I hooked Ray and Dina, I was guaranteed not to be eliminated. While they do drop to fifth place, they do guarantee that they're not going to be eliminated. And at the pit stop, Phil calls this move unprecedented. I didn't think I could do it, but I found a way to plot and scheme in the amazing race. <laughs> it's kind of unprecedented. As leg four begins, Rob says he likes being under pressure. He wants it because it gives him an edge. I like to be under pressure. It makes me do better. It gives me an edge. They arrive at the roadblock where they have to ride a horse pretty fast around a course. Rob elects to do it and he burns through this in one shot, which is pretty impressive when you see how many times it takes the other teams to do. Amber comments and says he looks cute on that horse. Maybe that was easy. Because I'm a professional horse rider. You look cute. They now have to go to Buenos Aires, and there are two flights that are separated by five hours to go there. It would be killer to be on that first flight, and Rob and Amber do have a long shot of getting on it, though. On the way to the airport, Amber says uh, the other teams would feel terrible if Rob and Amber caught up to them after uh, Rob and Amber took the penalty, and all the other teams that are in front of them actually ate the four pounds of meat. Rob says, who cares about them? He thinks they are all striving to be like him. Who cares about any of them? I hate the fact that we're doing well. The other teams love us. They're striving to be like us. Anyways, we then cut to the plane where sure enough, the other teams are laughing about how Rob and Amber are going to get what they deserve for not eating the meat and taking the penalty. However, they do finagle their way onto the plane before it closes up and everyone is deflated. Rob even pokes at Ron when he gets on the plane about eating the meat. Rob and Amber didn't make it. Yeah. That. No freaking way. That's horse crap. Run, I was just stomach. <laughs> Later on in the leg, Lynn and Alex say they don't talk to Robin Amber and they then proceed to compare him to an STD. Lynn and I just don't talk to Robin Amber. The bottom line is they're kind of like an STD. You gotta protect yourself from them. And the only way you can do it is just keep yourself away from them. Rob and Amber arrive at the detour in second place and pick the shipwreck task. This ends up being no problem for them as they blow through it pretty easily while Lynn and Alex's boat has mechanical issues and it feels a bit like karma for how they were talking about Rob and Amber earlier. Hey, it's the old man in the sea. Thanks, buddy. Make your way back to the shore and travel by taxi to the next pit stop. They race to the pit stop and Rob says along the way that luck has always been on his side. He is just so cocky this season. Love him or hate him. I'm telling you, we just get lucky. Luck has always been on my side. It was like I was born with a horseshoe right up my ass. They arrive at the pit stop and... Rob and Amber, you're team number one. <laughs> Good job! Yeah! That is now two out of the first four legs where they have earned first place. They are certainly off to a fast start for sure. Leg five begins and they have to fly to Johannesburg, South Africa next. Rob says that he thinks there is a guardian angel looking out for them, which I am not sure how that works for the largest villains of the season who are blatantly lying and deceiving everyone, but there you go. That's his mindset. There has been guardian angel looking out for Amber and I, because without it, I don't think we'd still be around. Once again, all of the teams are on the same flight and everyone is equalized yet again. Rob and Amber essentially lose a six and a half hour lead that they had. When they get to the clue box, they have an option to go for the fast forward, which there are only two on the entire race and only one team can claim each time there's a fast forward. A fast forward lets a team skip the detour and roadblock tasks and just go straight to the pit stop. They decide, why not? Let's risk it. Let's go for the fast forward. And it is a pretty big risk and it doesn't pay off as they get Get their second and uh, they can't get the fast forward. Rob asks Amber to make a decision. Maybe this other team will fail at the fast forward task, maybe, but uh, she won't make a decision and she just freezes up on him. Wanna go? I'm asking you to make a decision. Can you do that? Just tell me, yes or no. 
they do end up leaving to go to the detour and along the way they stop by a hospital to get directions and as it turns out there are quite a few people at the hospital who do recognize them and wants to talk to them not realizing that rob and amber just need to go 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 and rob makes a joke about this i'm gonna go to the hospital yeah i figure why not a little psychiatric evaluation I mean, we probably need it at this point. They do finish the detour task where they have to give the right items to the right tribe members and they leave in fifth place after blowing through it pretty easily, but they have now dropped four places from how they started this lag. Here is your next clue. Find the bargain wasp market. Thanks, Chief. At the roadblock, they have to buy five designated items for a local orphanage, and this is made easy when someone actually recognizes Amber from Survivor and helps her complete it very quickly. <laughs> so excited. Thank you very much. Orlando's children's home. Okay, you're coming with me. They race to the pit stop and. Rob and Amber, your team number five. <laughs> Three <Three-seven. laughs> yeah. yeah. As they start leg six, Amber's pretty sure the gut feeling she had earlier in the season before about all the other teams not liking them is basically a fact now. Rob says uh, he doesn't think they're getting any Christmas cards. Up until this point, I think the other teams have kind of been not too fond of me and Rob. Needless to say, I don't think we're going to be getting any Christmas cards from these people. Next, everyone has to go to the Lion and Rhino Reserve, and there are two shuttles for all the teams to ride and to feed the animals. They have to get on the second one due to how they started the leg, which is no fault to anything they've done this leg. And at the Reserve, Meredith and Gretchen are begging for money. Since they finished last in the previous leg and were penalized since it was a non-elimination leg, they had to lose everything and basically start with just the clothes in their back. Most of the other teams are giving them five bucks each, except for Rob and Amber. Rob labels both of them as con artists, which is him just painting a narrative that is not true at all. And he does try to do it again later on in the season, claiming that they are faking injuries that are very much real. We're starting the, the Save the Rhino Fund, and that's no lying. I'm not giving them any money. They're the biggest con artists going. After the Lion and Rhino Reserve, they mindlessly follow the other teams to the airport and actually end up going the wrong way, which causes them to be on the second flight. Where the airport is this way? We have to turn them out and go back. Get out of here, you serious? They fly to Botswana and after arriving, Rob tries to get into Lynn and Alex's taxi, but they say no, acting as if there is not enough room for Rob and Amber, which is a lie considering that two teams earlier in the episode shared a taxi. However, this is what happens when you make enemies with other teams, but Rob and Amber would have done the exact same thing to Lynn and Alex, despite how Rob tries to play the victim here. Dude, there's not enough seats. There's plenty of room, bro. No, there really is. Plenty of room. Is this a bus? No, it's yeah. a taxi. Is this a bus? Rob then says that Lynn and Alex have their heads up their butt and he is done being nice. But this has to be a joke because we have yet to see him be nice to anyone but Amber. He might be able to run Alex like a little farm boy, but he can't treat everybody like that. I'm done being nice. I mean, it's getting to be crunch time now. There's six teams left. The roadblock is all about spear throwing, so Rob elects to do it. Now, he doesn't do too well, though, and Amber says uh, he typically loses his patience pretty quickly. Rob continues to get frustrated and acts like maybe he was given defective equipment, blaming the equipment and not himself for his failure. You shopping these things or what? He loses his patience pretty quickly. But he does eventually get it, and they leave the roadblock in last place. Come on, baby, good job. Are we last? Yes. Rob is on a warpath now and drives so aggressively while also talking trash that he actually passes multiple teams on the road and even sees one team flip their vehicle. Now, he doesn't see the vehicle flip in the middle of it happening. He just passes by after they've already flipped their vehicle, and they did wreck themselves, and to be fair, they are just fine. And he just says that he doesn't want anyone hurt, but this is a race and he isn't stopping. Oh, uh, car flipped over. This is a competition, but we don't want anybody to get hurt. You know, that's not fun for anybody. This angers Lynn and Alex, who aren't even the ones who got in the wreck, but felt compelled to pull over. That was Rob and Amber, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. That's just so typical of their game. There was no way we'll stop it. Well, it's still a competition. Let's not get crazy. This aggressiveness combined with not caring about the car wreck like many other teams do, gets them back up to second place, and they blow through their detour task of sucking up water from a spring and filling up ostrich eggs to finish the detour in second place. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Morning, the last team's chicken may be eliminated. They race to the pit stop, barely trailing one other team, and... Rob and Amber, your team number two. 
Leg 7 begins and they need to travel to Sankuyo Village, which is 141 miles away. They get there and they have a detour, which they pick the easier task of milking a goat. It is now time to introduce another team that matters for the remainder of the story, Ron and Kelly, who are also jerks to each other though, almost all race due to both parties being at fault. It's really annoying to watch. Unlike Ron and Kelly though, Rob and Amber are shown to be kind, loving and supportive. And this contrast happens a lot for the rest of the season. Do you want me to squeeze? It isn't gonna help for you to squeeze because I know how to do this. Ron's being the drill sergeant. You're doing so good, baby. You want me to hold the cup? Yeah, you hold the cup. It's okay, baby, you're doing awesome. They finish the detour in second and at the roadblock, Rob elects to do it. He has to drive a truck while removing trees on a path. It's pretty easy for pretty much every team, but he is just that much better at it. And they finish the roadblock in first place. Drive yourself to the next pit stop, Kawhi River Lodge. In what has by far been the calmest, most drama-free episode for Rob and Amber so far, they race to the pit stop and... Rob and Amber. Your team number one. <laughs> Good job, baby. That is their third first place finish so far, and they are steamrolling the competition. Leg eight begins, and they now need to fly to India, and at the tiny airport in Francistown, him and Ron actually work together on getting faster tickets to India, while all the other teams are outside on the phone and just chilling. While getting these faster tickets, the receptionist lady does want to know what she should say to the other teams if they ask for the same thing, and Rob does his usual Rob father thing. <laughs> No, please tell yes. them. Tell There's them no that you can't do it at this time. Can't. Tell them if they say why not, just point to me. And don't worry about it. Now, even though Ron and Kelly just got massive help from Rob and Amber, they decide to uh, trash talk them and say that Rob and Amber are just, oh, so manipulative. Nobody really likes Rob and Amber. Yeah. Where they're definitely manipulative as anyone I've ever met in my entire life. And they kind of cut it off and quit talking to them. They arrive in India with Ron and Kelly on the first flight ahead of everyone else. Notice how Ron and Kelly didn't tell everyone else about this flight. And when they arrive at the palace, Rob remarks how it was built for a guy's girlfriend. And he says, imagine if he did the same for Amber, but better. Better. So the guy built this for his girlfriend. <laughs> or for himself. Imagine if I built you a place. They then have to travel to a steel emporium and it is time for a roadblock which requires them to search 600 tin boxes for a clue. Amber elects to do it and Lady Luck is on her side as she quickly crushes it. Baby, you got it? Yeah. Travel by cycle rickshaw to the area of Ashba. They then travel to the detour and they choose to deliver tea to five businessmen that they have written on a list. It goes seemingly without a hitch for them though Rob does get confused on the last businessman due to a barrier of communication and when he figures out what is going on, he rob fathers the businessman. Who's a Sharfi? Are you a Sharfi yeah. or are you? He is a Sharfi. You. Give him the tea. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. buddy. Don't try to pull a fast one like that again. They then race to the mat where Phil is and... You guys probably think this is the end of the leg? What? I don't want to hold you up. I have your other clue. Are you serious? You're still racing. This leg is not over. If this had been an official pit stop, and it should have been, but we'll explain in a second why it's not, this would have been their fourth first place finish. Leg eight continues, and they have to board a train to get their next clue. Everyone gets on the same train that night without knowing where they are going or how long it will take to get there. Now, everyone does get their clue at 1 a.m., and it turns out this is a 24-hour train ride, which helps explain why there was no pit stop when they have that long time to rest on the train. They just chill and relax, with Ron and Kelly saying that Rob is actually really humorous and Amber is very sweet. This first time we were able to sit down with Rob and Amber and actually talk to him and have fun. Rob's really humorous and Amber's just very sweet. After that long and arduous ride, they finally arrive and they have to first go to a clock tower to get their next clue. And guess what? That clock tower isn't open until 10 a.m., which is about 12 hours after they get there, which means for 36 hours, these teams are not really racing at all. Rob and Amber decide to go get a hotel room. And while he's there, he finds someone, to be exact, the manager of the hotel who speaks English pretty well and that manager agrees to help Rob and Amber for the entire leg free of charge. How much would it cost for you to take me around and show me? Free of charge. Free of charge. I need a guide tomorrow to help me all day. All right. Thanks buddy. Yeah. Finally they get to the detour and they pick the physical task of moving large elephant statues. Their guide from the hotel is a huge help with this and while employing help from the locals as well for his task, Rob says, hey people who are helping me for free, no cost coffee breaks here, which feels like a callback to All-Stars when he said Sesternino was on a never-ending coffee break. Watch the wheel, watch the wheel. Come on now, let's go. I'm holding the elephant's tail. No coffee break here. 
they finished the detour in second place, which is great considering everyone started it at the same time this leg. Thank you. The roadblock has them racing a camel cart around a track twice, and this one's really up to the camel to do the work. Amber elects to do it, and the camel gives Amber a hard time a lot. And right before it crosses the finish line to end the detour, it decides, nah, I'm taking a coffee break, which is not Amber's fault, and it's kind of funny, but it does hurt them finishing the task. Go! We need to go! Go, go, go! No! No! Oh, God, please, no. Jesus. They do eventually finish the roadblock though behind Ron and Kelly, so they don't do too bad, but on the way to the pit stop, their driver has to get gas, and it is a foot race to the pit stop, and... Ron and Kelly, Rob and Amber. Your team's number two and three. The only reason they got third and not second is because Uchenna and Joyce used the fast forward on this leg. So we move on to leg nine, where they now have to travel to Istanbul, Turkey, not Constantinople. Despite it being late at night, Rob and Amber go to a 24 hour travel agent in an attempt to try and get on an earlier flight, but it doesn't matter as everyone gets on the same flight. At the airport, Rob then needlessly tries to mess with Meredith and Gretchen by asking them if they got on the earlier flight. He has no idea that there is an actual earlier flight though. He just thinks he's messing with them. This needling of Meredith and Gretchen actually causes Uchenna and Joyce along with them to see if there really is an earlier flight and uh, maybe Rob is onto something. And what do you know? There is, and they all get on it while Rob and Amber along with Ron and Kelly are stuck on the second later flight all because Rob was being cocky. What is the earliest flight to Istanbul? An 8 p.m. Indian Air flight from Delhi to Dubai. What is even worse about Rob's cockiness here is that Ron and Kelly actually mentioned that, hey, we think we overheard Uchenna actually mentioning that there is an earlier flight, but Rob dismisses it since he doesn't view Uchenna and Joyce as threats. So, was that airline the 3.30 that we I were looking at? I thought he said of? Turkish Airlines. Who yeah. said that, Uchenna? Oh yeah, he has no clue what he's talking about. They arrive at the airport and Rob's cocky attitude basically says that the other teams are like the blind leading the blind. They're probably behind them. Meanwhile, their flight left hours before Rob's and he calls them stupid, but really he's the stupid one here as he still has no idea that they are ahead of him. Jenna and Joyce don't know who to turn to. Oh yeah. I mean, they're asking Meredith and Gretchen for advice now. It's like the blind leading the blinds. And they're stupid. Now their next task has them going to a lighthouse to find a gnome and on the boat ride to the lighthouse. They talk to someone who works on the boat and they are informed that actually Uchenna and Joyce and Meredith Gretchen have already come through and done the task about two hours before them. Rob feels like an idiot. How many teams come so far? Oh my God. Two teams already? They get their gnome from the lighthouse and at the detour, they can pick between doing an uber complicated task that involves reading a map, getting numbers from four of 200 plus columns, pulling up a chest, putting in those numbers into the chest, hoping that they got them in the right order, or they can simply weigh a bunch of people till they hit a designated number and they pick that much easier task and easily finish it while Ron and Kelly pick the complicated task for some reason. Where are you, babe? 2585. Okay, 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 let's go. So we got more than enough. Yeah. The roadblock they need to do now involves climbing and storming a fortress and it isn't a real struggle for any team, but Rob elects to do it and while doing it, Ron and Kelly catch up. However, they get tripped up on finding the key, meaning Ron and Kelly, and Rob helps him and Amber maintain their third place position out of the roadblock. You got it. Hey, hey. Yeah. come on, come in here. You did it. We're going to the pit stop. They race to the pit stop and... Rob and Amber, at team number three. It's a very close competition. Of course, uh, you can see Ron over there on the other tower. It's a non-elimination leg though, so everyone is still racing. And leg 10 launches with them flying to London, England and having to go to Abbey Road for their next clue. While other teams settle for a direct flight to London, which sounds the fastest, it turns out that uh, there is a faster flight and Rob and Amber work their butt off to find that flight. And it involves connecting flights instead, leaving earlier, connecting to another flight and then connecting to London. It gets them there an hour and a half ahead of everyone. It left at 5.50 in the morning and was supposed to arrive at London at 9 a.m. 
an hour and a half earlier than the Turkish flight. Surprisingly, after finding this better flight, Amber is the one who Rob fathers the person to not help any other team, and Rob backs her up. He really is rubbing off on her. Don't let anybody else use the internet. Please, nobody else. You understand? Mm -hmm. Thank okay. you. <laughs> after arriving in London, they find themselves a local who agrees to take them wherever they need to go and help them with any tasks that they have. This seems to be a specialty of theirs in a bunch of locations, and it really pays off here as they get to the detour where they can either solve a series of riddles or move some boats. Since their guide knows London super well, they pick the riddles task, and along the way, Amber dresses up and pretends to be Sherlock Holmes. Just going around. Hey, give it back. I think everything's gonna be over here. In the no, we're good. Because of the guide they enlisted, they crush this task pretty easily and end up at the home of Sherlock Holmes in first place, which I actually think is a super cool location and I kind of want to visit it now. Thanks. Yeah, in the car, too. Ah, thank all you. right, thank you. Your next clue is at the Millennium Dome. They go to the Millennium Dome, where the final opportunity to yield another team this race is at, and they choose to yield Ron and Kelly, who finagled their way onto the Robin Amber flight. So this seems a bit baffling as the other two teams are at least an hour and a half behind them, so why not yield one of them instead? It is only going to annoy Ron and Kelly, and it's not going to eliminate them either. We choose to yield Ron and Kelly. Oh, they're not going to be happy. The roadblock has them driving a double-decker bus through a marked course, and this is not an easy task to accomplish, but since Amber can't drive a manual, Rob has to do it. He does end up completing it in four tries and surprisingly does this before any other team shows up, including Ron and Kelly. Thanks a lot. When Ron and Kelly arrive and see that they are yielded, they draw on Rob and Amber's picture like children to paint them as the devil. The devil made me do it. <laughs> <laughs> they race to the pit stop and... Rob and Amber, you are team number one. Yeah! That is their fourth official first place finish and five if you count the uh, unofficial leg where it just kept continuing and they have now secured themselves a spot in the finale. Will they be able to capitalize on their luck and aggressive gameplay to win it all? Let's find out. Finale time. It is Uchenna and Joyce versus Ron and Kelly versus Rob and Amber. The pressure is on and before leg 11 starts, Rob asks, hey, who here is going to be second place? And Joyce says he will be. Which of you two teams are going to finish second? They need to go to Kingston, Jamaica, and Rob says that after winning Survivor, which is a very liberal view on his game, to be clear, Amber won and he got second. He says there's no reason that they shouldn't end up on top. There's no reason why we shouldn't win it again. So just write the check. But all of the teams are equalized yet again as they all get on the same flight, and in Jamaica, they hit the roadblock. They each need to do the limbo, which Amber elects to do. And what makes this limbo special, though, is that the lower she can go, the better the time they get for leaving the beach the next morning. Come on, you got it. That's it, that's it, that's it. Yeah! The next morning they have a detour and they get to pick between either building a raft or going down the stream on a raft for eight miles and uh, that would have been a slow ride. So they smartly pick the building a raft and every team makes the same decision as them. Plus Rob has built a bamboo raft on Survivor All-Star so this is nothing new. But Rob does cut his finger open while building it, so Amber gets him gloves and says to wear them, and Rob says no because he's being prideful. Cut my finger open. Put gloves on, please. The gloves are fine. I don't need the gloves. This next moment is not something I am 100% sure I want to interpret, but I feel like it needs to be included as it is so out of place from the rest of the season. I do whatever I can to make you happy. That's my girl. And then after the race, you can make me happy. They finish the detour in first, and the race of the pit stop is insane. Pretty much every team is neck and neck. Now, they are currently ahead of everyone, but it's not by much. On the way to the pit stop, their driver has to get gas, which sucks. But Ron and Kelly's driver also has to get gas. But Rob and Amber get stopped by the police for a routine check, which sucks even harder. But crazily enough, Uchenna and Joyce get a flat tire along the way, opening the door to a comeback. At the pit stop, Phil tells them... Rob and Amber. <laughs> Your team number two. Yeah. Woo! What a race! <laughs> it is time for the final leg of the race, and what is the insane task that they must do to kick it all off? They need to chop 
50 onions into tiny pieces, it's a real tearjerker. But what is nice is that as the like starts, you can tell these two are happily in love with each other. Couldn't be happier. We really have been working together perfectly. Amber's been the most amazing partner anybody could ever have. They get to the onion chopping task in first, and while doing it, Rob makes a joke. I'm very fast. When I was a kid, my mother used to put me in the basement to make me chop onions. <laughs> Whatever. They then have a detour which involves either riding a horse or hitting a golf ball into a small green area. Rob obviously picks golf. As anyone who saw him on Survivor All-Stars knows, he loves it. They finish the detour fast and race out of there in first place. That might be it. I'm on, I'm on. Everyone now has to fly to Puerto Rico and Rob and Amber get the first flight out with Ron and Kelly leaving you Chenna and Joyce in their dust. But when they get to their destination, it doesn't matter as uh, the next place they have to go to is closed until the morning. So all the teams are equalized one last time. 7.30 to four. Well, what are we supposed to do? There's a hotel right at the top of the hill. I should go get that well needed rest. When it opens up in the morning, they find out it is a roadblock and Amber has to jump off a bridge and swim to shore somehow while the other two teams do this with no problem. She gets lost along the way and they fall to last place. Come on, baby! Friday, a final destination city, Miami, Florida. Their clue says it is time for their final destination, Miami, Florida. Rob's heavy foot has them racing past the other teams on their way to the airport. And when they arrive, they get the same tickets as Uchenna and Joyce who get an 11.15 a.m. flight. However, a million dollars is on the line here and being tied isn't good enough for Rob. So he does his usual thing of working his butt off to get his way onto an earlier flight, which they do just that and get on a 10 a.m. flight instead. Can we get on the flight, please, ma'am? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uchenna and Joyce try to get on the same flight as Rob and Amber once they find out that sure enough they're on it, but the airline literally closes multiple doors and says no, there's no more boarding, but for some reason the receptionist calls the pilot and he says yes to them being able to board, aka Rob and Amber now have competition in the states and they don't have an hour and 15 minute lead anymore. <laughs> This sucks. Upon arriving in Miami, they have to find a cigar shop for the next clue, but their taxi driver sucks and they can't seem to find anyone who can help them find this place as they keep getting bad directions. They do finally get there, but they get there in second place. You have the clue, please? Thank, Thank you. you sir. Let's go. Okay, buddy. However, there is hope. Uchenna and Joyce are at the final pit stop, but they need to pay their taxi driver. And since they have literally zero dollars, Rob and Amber race them to the finish line. And... Rob and Amber, you are the second team to arrive. Thank you. Thank you. What an incredible race. And despite coming in second, Rob has some nice words to end the season on. We finished second, but I wouldn't change a thing. I got Amber, so I'm in first place in my book. I love you. I love you. So let's break this down. How were Rob and Amber as characters? Rob was cocky, Amber was sweet, and together they were just fun. Similar to Survivor All-Stars, Rob was the figurehead of their team. Though unlike All-Stars, Amber seemed to mostly let him do whatever he wanted for better or for worse. And since there was no risk of them getting voted out by others, they could just goof and have fun and it made for an excellent show. They embraced being villains and constantly were villains, but then still tried to like, played off to us in their confessionals that, uh, oh no, we're the victims, but uh, we knew better this time. Out of 40 character moments shown on the show, 18 were heroic and 22 were villainous, making Rob and Amber villains on The Amazing Race 7. Now, how are Rob and Amber with their racing strategy? Wild. The first half of the season saw them throwing everything at the wall to see what would stick. Was some of it unnecessary? Yes. Was most of it entertaining? You bet. They constantly annoyed other teams, played cutthroat, and worked their butts off to get better flights. They constantly employed locals to help them, and sometimes the locals just recognized them and wanted to help them. They had no issues with any task and won four official legs as a result. The only issue with their race and this was the one that made them lose at the very end was Uchenna and Joyce's luck on getting on their flight and ultimately not being able to find a Cuban cigar shop in Miami. They played a winning race for 99% of the season and it shows. Out of 58 strategic moments shown on the show, 
42 were smart and 16 were dumb, making Rob and Amber smart racers on The Amazing Race 7. Thanks for watching. If you like the content you see here, then please consider supporting me and this channel on Patreon. Your financial support makes all this possible, so thank you and thank you for watching.